Hey man, hey. Heard you like sleep aids. Also heard you don't like having nightmares, so I will go ahead and change that camera angle for you guys. So, with that being said, uh, if you are one of those people that are not signed up to our newsletter, which everybody should be, and you are unaware, uh, we have Hypnos over at www.ksmpain.com. Currently it is on buy one, get one free. So if you have not tried the miracle sleep aid that is Hypnos, now is probably one of the best times ever to try it besides the other tons of BOGOs that we've done on Hypnos because we really, really like hearing you guys feed our ego and tell us how amazing Hypnos is. As if that wasn't awesome news enough, we also have our joint aid uh, or our joint support supplement, Helios, which by the way, if you have not tried any joint supplements in the past, this one is unlike I'm sure any of you have tried in the past. It is fantastic. I use it daily. Go ahead and pick yourself up Helios on this buy one, get one Helios sale that we have going on right now through Monday at midnight. Now, on top of that, we have a 29% discount code that you can use stacked with the BOGOs. That makes this an extra awesome deal. Also, uh, I am joined by, if you could not tell by the title, um, Desi Hulk, yet again, India represent. Uh, well, Canada, really. But, so yeah, he, he's joining me again. We discuss a bunch of things, a whole host of things, which I have forgotten by now because we recorded the episode quite a while ago. So, you're better off reading the description box for the discount code and what this episode is about. Also, I'll probably have stuff about what it's about in the title, so that, just don't worry about it. Just watch, watch the hate cast. So, uh, you're here to enjoy the hate cast, so I will go ahead and let you do that. And, as always, probably end this on a much more awkward note than it needs to be ended on. Thanks for supporting. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. All that other YouTuber garbage that I'm supposed to say. Enjoy the show. <laughs> Let's get, I'm sorry, what? Let's get this done, I'm good to go. I started the recording already. Oh, God. Welcome to the Hate Cast. This is your host, Bryce Allen, and I am joined by, of course, Desi Hulk. Now, uh, I do have a quick little story time here. Uh, we were supposed to record this earlier, but what ended up happening is we had a little bit of technical difficulties on my end because... Uh, Home Depot's trash. See, I just moved into this house, and uh, my dad had gifted me a door, uh, nice French doors for the back, uh, the back porch. And what it ended up happening is, is he ended up buying them. They were on clearance, right? So that became an issue because they weren't the right size. And then uh, we ordered them. They came in. It took about. Uh, I think a week or two to manufacture because they actually make these in the United States and then uh, they ended up having the wrong size again so they said okay fine we'll just order the right size this time they had somebody come out professionally measure a contractor or parts re replacer uh, is what they are more likely due to the fact that they don't do any carpentry work they just do Door goes in this slot, uh, very, very robotic, so they can do that quick and easy. Um, but anyway, so he came and measured. The door was, again, too big by half an inch. Okay? Half a fucking inch. Now, that took a total of... All right, don't become Ed. I'm sorry. The amount of times I've heard that before, where like it's about half an inch too big. If I had a nickel for every time I had that had that said to me, I would be at least pretty well off by now. So it's like, at the end of the day, it's all about the itches. <laughs> <laughs> I, sorry. Uh, I'm sick. You walked into that one, to be fair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I get that. 
Uh, but anyway, so it was like having an inch too, too big. And then they came back and they said, we're going to change you door manufacturers. We're going to upgrade you $600 because we're going to be baller and we're going to take care of you. So we wait for four weeks. That gets manufactured. And again, uh, just like, uh, you know, Desi's problem, it was half an inch too big. So we're, we're now on the third door for my residential house. And somebody, by the way, this cost Home Depot, like, I'm guessing like $12,000 once all is said and done, right? Someone's getting fired, you know? I but, should hope uh, so, man. I mean, that's that's a lot of money. Man, usually that's they're like pretty good about this stuff, too, you know? But the store manager doesn't call back, doesn't do the things that he's supposed to do. Uh, you know, if you're listening, uh, Fort Smith Home Depot, uh, you need to step your game up. So, uh, I did want to kind of get into a little bit into what you've been dealing with. So, you've had a little bit of technical issues, technical issues with your body. So you had that whole spine realignment thing. You want to talk to us a little bit about that real quick? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, like, uh, well, as you know, I decided to come off of all, uh, like, all pre-workouts for about a year. Right. Just because I have not stopped taking them for 13 years. The first time I took a pre-workout was in 2016, sorry, 20, 2006, and um, haven't really stopped since. And I, and I found the tolerance that when it comes to the cannibal ride, five scoops is my limit. Oof, that's a lot. We do not suggest that, but uh, no, that's a lot. Don't yeah. do anything that don't do anything that I do. It's just that apparently, according to my friend, who's the physio who guy you'll have on, right? right according yeah, to yeah. him, I'm a I'm a unicorn. You're like, a unicorn. Okay. Yeah, he's like you. Ha you won so many genetic lotteries when it comes to being able to help hand handle stimulants and pain tolerance and right. your tendons being that of a freak. So, just he just advises anybody not to replicate what I do, just because he cannot guarantee their personal safety. Right. Yeah. And, and then, you have been on with, with then you have to deal with the problem of your horn being an inch, half an inch too big. But you know, hey, so got to bring it back around. Um, so, anyways, what happened was, um, so I came off the stimulants, yeah, and I started noticing that, and then the next day I trained. So the day that I took last stimulants that I took was the two scoops of chaos and train ride that I had, right? Ended up hitting, end up ended up hitting like a seven hundred and eighty pound box squat for like about a triple, right. and then I did a bunch of barbell hypers with five plates. Right. Next day I benched with zero stimulants, which is some coffee, everything was fine. Right. The following night, I noticed that I noticed that I had some electric vibration, like electric shocks run from my hips to all the way to my toes. Right. Which, but it wasn't really like a pain, so he was asking me like, at a scale of one to 10, one being like nothing and 10 being like, oh my God, I need to die, pain. How much was it? I'm like, it's not really painful, it's just, it's annoying. And it just keeps me. It just keeps on waking me up. Yeah, yeah. So we. So I went to his. He's like, okay, well, look, we're supposed to go off to Pakistani food on Saturday. I'll see you then. And uh, that was on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I called him up. I'm like, no, I'm coming to your clinic because something does not feel right. My hips really, really feel tight. Again, it's not really hurting me all that much, but it just feels uncomfortable. Something's not right. Right. He's like. So he's like, well, this must be serious because I just don't like to show up to clinics for anything. And his clinic's like all the way in the other end of the city. So uh, he's like, let's rule out your lower back. So he's made, started making me do a, a couple of upward dogs, like about reps of 10. Right. And all you hear was this. I'm like, what the hell was that? He's like, well, it's your back. It's your spine realigning. I'm like, okay, so what does that mean? He's like, well... You probably have a bulging disc that's slightly bulging out, like yeah. it's, a, it's bulging. And I'm like, well, if I know anything about biology, that shit's supposed to hurt like there's nobody's business. Right. Why am I not in pain? Yeah. It was just like discomfort. And he's like, well, have you seen yourself? The amount of muscles that you have on your spinal erectors 
that's what's preventing you from not having crippling pain, but it's a good thing you came to me. So that was on a Friday, and he told me, don't lift anything heavy. You could do some bench press and some, like, fluff work, like bicep curls and pull-downs and stuff, right. but nothing. And I'm like, well, I'm due for a week off in my uh, programming cycle anyways. I might as well take that because I'm not just going to go to the gym to do curls. I'm not – that's just not my thing. Yeah. Right? So he's like, all right. So he had me start doing like 500 upward, uh, three to 500 upward dogs a day. And he's like, you could split them up. So I started doing them on last Saturday. And come Tuesday, I had the last couple clicks. And after that, there was like no more pain. I was back to normal. Yeah. So he's like, well, now let's bring the volume down to about 100 a day. So that way you keep on lubricating your spine because... You know, I have a job where I work in IT where I'm sitting down on my ass all the time, so that's not really the best for you. Right. And that was really it, but it was really surprising to me now that after my spine's been in line, I gained about an inch in height, so I'm, about, I'm 5'10 now. There you go. And now, as I'm lifting, that one inch or half an inch makes a difference, man. Like, your setup on your stands for your deadlifts, your squats, your benches or your box squats it's everything just changes now you gain an inch it's like everything all the leverage just changed so i'm having fun yeah. discovering that now you know that's that's funny you say you know you were kind of asymptomatic when it comes to uh you just knew something wasn't right but you couldn't quite put your finger on it you know so you went into the clinic. it wasn't hurting me right it wasn't really hurting me at all a lot of so i was like okay a lot of times what people most likely associate with disc uh, issues is pain that they eventually get right either you know you bend down and the winds knocked out of you or what's more likely is a sharp stinging sensation that people usually end up feeling or some sort of nerve pain or something like that but oftentimes disc issues can actually pop up and they're asymptomatic right they don't they don't really have any symptoms associated with them you can just feel something's a little bit off during certain movements so it's interesting that you bring that up, but I'm definitely going to be discussing that with Guy because most people, what they don't realize is disc issues can happen. They almost all the time happen from the front. They don't actually happen from the back. So you can't cause a, a disc injury by bending backwards all the time. 99% of the time, it's by an excessive leaning forward, right? A lot of guys who are taller have, or, or it's, you know, like, heavy crunches or something like that because you you've you've seen those guys that just flop like a fish going up and down doing you know sit-ups or something like that or on the opposite end you have that guy who just obviously can't lift this weight but he decides to do it anyway like on the cable crunches and stuff like that you know and he just uses yeah, he's whole the ballerina jumping it. up and down but yeah yeah um but, uh, but that happens, and people get disc issues from that. And not only that, but like the good morning squat too. You know, I'm I'm a big fan of using body English because everybody who lifts a significant amount of weight is not going to look yeah, pretty. No, I, you know. Yeah, you will. Yeah. So you're not going to look pretty. But at the same time, if if it's so excessive that it's causing issues, uh, you know, like hip issues, uh, IT band issues, right? That's another popular one that's kind of popped up out of nowhere over the past couple of years. What do you think that is, by the way? Honestly, man, I think it's an issue of mobility. I find that in Western culture, especially in North American, uh, American Canadian mentality, is we want to be as jacked as possible, right? Or we want to be like really shredded, but we don't really put an emphasis on mobility work or. And we don't emphasize on mobility work. We don't emphasize on building an actual core strength. So I right. think that has to do a lot with it. Now, people assume that if you have a six-pack, that means you have a strong core. I'll, I can tell you from being an athlete and being a wrestler, I've Absolutely met plenty of guys yeah. who has a ripped eight-pack, and you could just blow and they'll tip over. And these are not like small guys. So I think a strong body turns internally. And the one of the reasons why I had a slight bulging disc and the fact that it went back into place is the fact that I spent years, a couple of decades building my core. Also, I find that what could be causing that is our over-reliant on stimulants because <clears throat> when your nervous system is so amped up and when you've been taking it for years at a time, like almost like two decades, 
you kind of tend to lose in touch with your body. Like, it really took me to not be on stimulants for three days and go completely clean to feel my nervous system resetting and then notice, oh, wait, this can't be normal. Right. Whereas, have I kept on taking stimulants, I would be like, well, yeah, my body just does that. Like, And I probably would have been fine until I lifted something really heavy and then, you know, you never know. So yeah, yeah. I really think that if we take the time to do some mobility work, maybe some yoga, right. and really cut back on the stims, this will go a long way. Because people think, oh, I've actually had one of my buddies who hasn't trained for like 12 years and wanting to train with me. And I'm like, no, man, you should do some yoga instead just to build up your core. And he's like, well, isn't that for fags? And I'm like, hold on. So you're going to be in a room full of hot women in spandex. And you're going to stretch out and get to work on your mobility and you'll get to interact with these people. That's, that's apparently is gay as hell. But, but you, I see guys quarter squatting while their spotters are butt, uh, butt fucking them. That's not gay at all. Like, you know, you put three plates on, (laughs) there's three guys trying to help this dude squat. That's not gay at all. But, you know, in a room full of hot women, I'm just, I don't know. But, I think we need to change our mentality when it comes to fitness, you know? Yeah. Large muscles are good to have. It's super sick to be shredded. But if you want to be able to do what you do for a long time, you have to build your health and your mobility from inside out, like any yeah. good structure. If you compare your – you said that you like architecture, right? You, you like examining oh, yeah. the human yeah. body from a point of view of an architect. Well, if you're not letting a solid cement foundation and you're not putting the rods in there – any type of concrete that you uh, put a new mold into, what's going to happen? It's going to internally uh, implode on itself. Right. So I think we we really need to change our perspective. What it means to be strong and jacked. Yeah, and some people, you know, they only get like you're saying. There's those guys that are just big. They they look like bodybuilders. They look like they could give Ronnie Coleman a run for his money. Not really calm down. Uh, but you know, they're, they're, they're really, they're really, uh, they have a really fantastic physique, but they're just internally weak. You know, I mean, they're, they're strong at specific movements, right? Cause that's what everybody does is they concentrate on, you know, the bench press, the squat, the deadlift, and those are great and those are fine, but it's not it. It's not the ultimate. That's not just what you do. Right. I mean, core strength is something, you know, underutilized. And another thing, too, is people are afraid of frequency, too, with this whole overtraining thing that people are so Oh, my God. Of. Please. It's just our ancestors did hard labor every day. Yeah. We come from hunter and gatherers. Our great-grandfathers probably worked in factories or did manual labor. Right. Or the, even if you're really well off, you went to the army, you, you, you fought wars. I have no idea since how we ended up becoming a bunch of... Society of soy boys and pussies. I mean, like, what is overtraining? To me, I think what probably possibly could cause overtraining is the fact that you're under eating and the fact that you're using too much stims. I'll be honest with you. It's been about three weeks since I've almost been off of pre-workouts. Yeah. My appetite went up. I could eat more. I could sleep better. So I could push myself a lot harder. Yeah. So I think as soon as we stop using a crutch, and as soon as we started looking for the magic pill, supplements work, man. But supplements are exactly that, supplemental. If right, your diet's right. not on point, if your sleep's not on point, and your training's not on point, not even steroids is going to help you, man. So it's like people need to change their mindset. Our bodies are a lot tougher than our than our minds think we uh, are led, lead us to believe. Yeah. Just calm down, breathe, and stop looking at the big picture. Yeah. It, like you want to step on the Olymp- <clears throat> you want to step on the bodybuilding stage, and you have the genetic ability to do that. You're six foot five. You can put on a lot of weight. Let's say in four years you step onto the stage, four hundred pounds shredded, right? Ooh, buddy, Whoa. that's my wish. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> you step onto the stage, four hundred pounds shredded, right? Right. In four years, if you just visualize this now, and only think about that, what about the little steps that you have to take to get there? Yeah. Yeah. No, but I'm I'm always a uh, I'm always a whole like I, I don't look at at anything in the micro cycle. I look at everything in the macro. You know, like a lot of people say, I want a bigger bicep. I'm going to do curls. 
right? And then they do curls, and then they get bigger biceps, and they think that's the end. Well, I do, you know, like, okay, I want a better physique, so I'm going to take a look at the bigger picture, and when it comes to stuff like going into the sauna for recovery, right? Uh, building up a strong core, stuff like that that's going to protect me once I do have the muscle mass that will get me on stage, I'm doing right now in my late 20s, Yeah, you know? And uh, when it comes down to it, it's it's all a matter of, you know, getting every single one of those points that you had mentioned, training, nutrition, uh, supplements, uh, you know, even lifestyle factors, because that's something people don't understand either. It's, it's like you can't really afford to go extremely, and I'm talking like bare minimal low carb, if you're a pipe layer, right? Like if your no, job you is to lay just... pipes you need readily available glucose. It's just something that you're just going to have to be forced with. Whereas, you know, you and I, I mean, I have a desk job. I sit down, I answer you guys' questions. I manage Facebook, all that stuff. Manage the YouTube channel, edit the YouTube videos. Uh, more and more and more. I'm a jack of all trades around here. Whereas you're, you know, in the IT industry, and we can get away with a lot more drastic dietary changes than somebody who's like a firefighter or a police officer. Ronnie Coleman, I mean, look at him. He was eating rice and chicken and just, if you, I swear to God, guys, if you look up the videos of what Ronnie Coleman was eating, people who were like, eat clean, eat clean, would cringe. Just no, the I bottles on bottles on barbecue sauce. He had that on, master on barbecue sauce, yeah. Yeah. So and here's the thing, I have a buddy that I'm training with today at uh, five o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Yeah, he's a carpenter. Okay. Yeah. He's about five foot eleven, one hundred eighty eighty five pounds. He is one of the most ripped people naturally that I've ever seen. That's his genetic. Okay. He could also at one hundred eighty five pounds do a farmer carry of five hundred forty pounds and carry it sixty yards. Yeah. Okay. This guy we calculated for him to become fat. It would take him three hundred dollars of a week of groceries. Jesus. Yeah, because his yeah. metabolism is so fast, but he's a carpenter. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you think about? Because, um, because I know I have my own opinions on this when it comes to nutrition specifically. Uh, where do you think people can make the most drastic change? So, honestly, it's a simple answer, in my opinion. People are not going to like it. Okay. Okay. Anything that's, and. I'm a big fan of junk food, but you have to learn how to use junk food to your advantage. Right, but if right. you're somebody who's overweight, let's say if you're like 60 pounds overweight right. and you want to lose weight and be in shape, fasting yeah, yeah. is a key because whenever you – fasting is the only thing that will allow you to bring your insulin levels down to a point where you can actually start burning fat. And two, don't eat any desserts. Don't eat any soda. If it's not rice, if it's not sweet potato, if it's not protein, like whenever you go to a grocery store, you go around the per perimeter and yeah. that's what you get. Yeah. And I would say the opposite is true for those trying to gain weight because a lot of times you will find that they have this like more form. You know, everybody, we were talking about bigorexia, right? Uh, I don't know yeah. if I had that conversation with you uh, a while back, but. You know, it's a very real, real thing. Like body dysmorphia runs in the fitness industry, like crazy. Dude, I still think of. Hey. You've seen. Um, look, you you've seen my pictures on Facebook. You know, yeah. like I'm I'm about 250 pounds, and yeah. I'm leaning out right now. Exactly. And still, in my mind, in my gym, I don't think I'm big enough. Yeah. Like yeah, I literally, yeah, yeah. sometimes I feel like I, I'm so what skinny. What a joke! What a joke! Like it's, it's calm it's, down. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> but a lot of times you'll have the skinny guys. <laughs> Like, if they even get an ounce of fat on them, they automatically think they're obese. And it's like, the body doesn't work like that. Plus, you know, whereas somebody who is morbidly obese doesn't really have, you know, if they have a soda after their workout, or if they have Pop-Tarts or whatever, I know Pop-Tarts is a hot button food, whatever, like, it's just fucking pastry. I like Pop-Tarts, too. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I don't really, like, I don't really seek them out, though. That's the thing. No, I, I don't, don't. But I, whenever, whenever I have them, if they're I like around, to dip them in, I like to dip them, dip them in melted ghee. I will tell you one thing that has changed my life. 
you take some uh, of your favorite, like, sweet as hell protein powder. Like for me, it's vanilla ice cream uh, kraken. But you take that, you mix it in, like, that fat-free yogurt, and you spread that bitch on some fucking graham crackers. Oh, and we'll yes. We'll go to fat boy heaven. Um, but, man, Ain't it's just... wrong with fat boy heaven. Yeah. But, Ain't you know, wrong with fat boy heaven. whereas, you know, people who try to lose weight and stuff like that are all about, you know, reducing their energy intake. People who are afraid to gain weight or are super skinny and they're wanting to gain weight, they need to increase their energy intake. And a lot of the times, what's convenient for them is to grab a soda on the way home, right? I'm not, I'm not anti-full-fat soda. Like you, you know, people who are skinny who have physical jobs can get away with drinking one, you know? People who have physical jobs can get away with eating Pop-Tarts. They can get away with eating donuts. It's just a, it's yeah. just a matter of like... If your goals are to gain weight, do this. And that would be my biggest change is like if you have a goal, don't pussyfoot around it. Don't beat the bush around it. Don't sit there and say, well, I want to do this, but, but, but. No, just make a plan. Do that. And if that doesn't work, then change. Like it's but people are so paralyzed by now analyzing absolutely everything they do nowadays. And it's they because don't. they don't want to think. It's because they don't want to think, man. And here's the thing. We could say this because we've at least put in a decade into the gym, right? We've yeah. trained for at least a decade. And once you become fitter and once you have more muscle mass, you know it's okay to experiment because even if you get a little bit fat, if you have sufficient muscle mass, well, you'll just look super swole. <laughs> and if, if you live in a northern... And if you yeah. live in a northern climate like me, that's fine. But yeah. the problem is people that are inherently skinny and want to put on weight or people that are more uh, inherently overweight or obese and they want to lose weight, Yeah, it's like they're complete beginners. They don't know what to do and they're scared to try because they know they could try, uh, try for something better, but yeah. somehow this bottomless, depressive pit that they dug themselves under feels comfortable. I mean, how many of us actually stayed in relationships or because it felt comfortable in jobs, it felt comfortable. We know we deserve better. We could get better, but even though this relationship or this job or the way you look sucks, it's something that you're comfortable with and you're scared to move on. So I guess I could see from, from their point of view as well. Man, that's actually surprisingly deep. Um, I actually like that. I like that. I'm gonna steal that. Uh, but yeah, it's, no, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, um, and and to the skinny people that who will want to put on weight, I'll tell you what, there's a way of doing this, right? Cheat meals will after a workout, or if you're leading up to a major workout, 24 hours in advance, this will actually speed up your metabolism and give you that short caloric density rejuvenation that you need. Yeah. However, I do not believe in cheat days, though, because I've seen people completely ruin their fucking progress just eating like crap the whole day. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, but that I think all that stems from uh, it being around so much because, you know, back when they tried to do, like, the Atkins diet back in the day, or even more realistically, there was this, I don't know if you remember this, but you remember the grapefruit diet? Or oh, it was God. like people just oh, ate, like, diet? ate grapefruit. Uh, okay. Tapeworm. Don't don't do that. Yeah, I know, I know. That but was... uh, but they also had that apple a day diet and all that stuff. Well, in those programs, right, in those dietary methodologies, they had cheat days, and that was because you were like negative, you know, eighteen hundred calories a day because you ate a fucking apple, and that's it, right? And then you would go into a cheat day, and then you would uh, not gain any weight. Or if you're like, you know, I had a family member who was actually on it, who ended up, who ended up doing the diet exactly as planned. But when the cheat day came up, they were so starved, and they were so deprived, and they were so overworked because, you know, it's not just the grapefruit diet. It's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna start the grapefruit diet, or I'm gonna start the apple a day diet, and then I'm gonna start going to the gym every day, and then I'm gonna start, and they just go full bore. Right for a period of like a month, their cheat day comes up. They eat until they're in a coma, and then they stop doing all of those things because they're like, "Eh, I lost twenty pounds. You know, I don't need to do this anymore." And then they just whereas completely if, fall off the wagon and do it again next year. So, whereas if you if you, if they had 
Aiden like sensibly and even yeah. had like a, a little Debbie's cake if you're into that a one every day and you still yeah. ate clean like relatively all the other rest of the time and you train consistently yeah. not only would you have lost that 20 pounds but also maybe put on 20 pounds of muscle which in turn would make you look hell of a lot bigger I think in general and because and I was actually discussing this with my friend yesterday we had a really hard training session then we went for Pakistani food I'll lead into that story a little bit later yeah yeah I have amazing stories about that yeah but he said that the fact that we could afford to be vegan in our Western society that means that we don't have enough we don't have sufficient problems that we need to deal with we've become so physically lazy that uh, for most people, a vegan diet would suffice because we're not physically, that's how physically inactive we are. Think about it. As of the last 20 or 30 years, this is the where obesity has risen, skyrocketed, and we have more desk jobs. It makes sense. A hundred years ago, you couldn't afford, you couldn't survive as a vegan just because everybody did fit some sort of physical job. No, I get you. I get you. No, I, I completely, I actually agree with that too, because if you think about it, there are countries, you know, like, for example, my boss, so the guy who is the managing partner of Chaos and Pain right now is Wayne, Wayne Banks. Hold on one second. And, oh. Sorry, I just have to clear some notifi notifications. My bad. No, you're fine. Um, but Wayne, okay. uh, he went to Honduras, right? So South America. And uh, he went there just to visit where our coffee comes from because our, you know, I don't know if you know anything about coffee, but uh, a lot of the qual, the a lot of the quality behind coffee has to do with the soil and the location that's yeah. grown in, right? So we have very very high quality coffee. Long story short, he went down there and he saw one dude that kind of piqued his interest a little bit, right? He was this dude. He was this really skinny like jacked dude right just swinging a scythe cutting his his grass right now you can't buy a scythe in the united states or in canada without going to an antique shop because Absolutely. we just don't use them you know we just don't use them we use lawn mowers we use push mowers we use all these different things and this dude is making the most money where he's at by just swinging that scythe like a madman, right? And because of that, he don't have no weight problem. He looks malnourished, you know? And what does he eat every day? Rice and meat, you know? Like, the two cheapest things down there. Like, they have their own livestock down there, where he was at anyway. I know not of all of Honduras is completely like this, but where he was at. So they had, uh, you know, their own livestock. They had, you know, he he went, he made just enough money to go buy like a chicken or something, some sort of protein source, and a bag of rice, and that fed him, his daughters, his wife, and all that crap, right? And we take for granted the things that we have here, like simply like running water, not having to use a fucking scythe to cut our grass, right? But because we don't have those difficulties, we're also in a, in a point where the obesity epidemic has kind of taken hold. We've gotten out of shape and heart disease, diabetes, all these different uh, metabolic issues, fatty liver disease and all that stuff, they all have come to the forefront of our population. They've affected a wide portion of our population. And uh, yeah, that has to do with inactivity. That has to do with us not... not with an overabundance of food too. Like, when was the last time you've heard anybody actually starve to death in the United States or Canada? Never. You know, even to even the people that would be considered living off the land where you're at, like the Inuit, you know, they uh, have an abundance of food. I mean, they still go polar bear hunting because ultra cool rituals, and they still eat, you know, raw uh, whey or seal fat. And all that stuff, like cotton candy. It tastes right? amazing, by the way. I've never tried it. It's on the list, man. It, it tastes so. freaking awesome, bro. It does. Yeah, That's it cool. just. But I really like gaming meat because I used to go hunting with my dad, so it's like, 
I'm I also like anything. Meat. Like I'm 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 fine with it. Yeah, I've had like deer and, and boar and stuff like that. But. I, and this is where me and you and Jamie were kind of in agreement that yeah, sugar is probably not the best thing for you. But let's no. just say that no. the the white sugar is not that big of a bad demon that people portray it out to be. It just what you just have to you just have to take some accountability for yourself. That's it. Well, also, what people don't realize is there's enough research right now to vilify the fact that if you are active, if you're in the gym as often as we are, if you train as hard as we as we do, sugar is not going to be that much of a detriment to your health. It's no. just a readily f available form of glucose, and that's it. Um, it. Honestly, you know, if you overdo it, of course, as with anything, like you could eat... I, I'm, I know it's going to be controversial, but you could eat too much meat. You can totally yeah, you can. do that. You know, the carnival diet is a uh, is a asinine example of it. I'm like, like Dr. Sean Baker. He was like, yeah, it's the best thing for you, and no, no, And his blood work ends up being crap. And I'm like, right. We our bodies like homeostasis, right? Right. So everything has to be in balance. Am I the biggest fan of vegetables? No, I'm not. I like fruits better because I have more of a sweet tooth, but I still eat them because I know it's important. I like certain fruits, and I'm not going to give up my meat. See, I knew why so, I liked you. I knew I liked you. I'm a fruit guy, too. I, I absolutely love them. Yeah. Uh, dude, I, would, I would pick I, them over vegetables. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 if, if I don't have bananas in the morning, I will lose my shit. <laughs> don't let like, Jamie Like, I literally that. will lose my shit. Don't let it Jamie hear that. Entire, Oh, he knows this. Like, I will go, like, my two of the most fruit and vegetables on choice that I have every day for breakfast is half an avocado, and I have to eat two bananas. There you go. See, I uh, I have blueberries every day just because the research on them is spectacular, right? Yeah. Uh, and you can buy them frozen, and it's, like, not a big deal, and I just I reach I like to eat my fruits. I like to eat, 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 eat my fruits more seasonally, and I find in Canada... In the summertime, that's when you get the best quality of berries. And oh, yeah. I don't particularly yeah. like the taste of frozen berries. But for me, mangoes, papayas. I mean, I grew up in India where you have stuff like star fruit, which is really good for anti-cancer. And I remember yeah. eating them. I mean, breakfast at my dad's household was some sort of a protein like eggs or some sort of meat. Um, yeah. You had those rotis like flatbreads and then whole shitload of fruit. Like, my friend we, we were talking about, did I tell you about Samir? Yeah, yeah. He he the says Bible. like he says the 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 thing that you've got to realize about growing up in an Indian household is mango is your middle name. Like oh my god, where yes. he grew up, where he when he grew up, it was just like uh, so mango chutney, you know, mango this, mango that. He had mango also like jackfruit. side of mango. Yeah, jackfruit too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And jackfruit still this day is one of my favorite breakfast things. Although in Canada, it just, for one jackfruit, costs like $30. It's about like maybe a couple of pounds. Whereas in I India, I could get that for whatever. But my one of my favorite breakfasts were a puffed rice. Oh, yeah. yeah mix yeah. of mango and jackfruit with whole milk, like whole high-fat milk. Yeah. Mix that up with a little bit of brown sugar. Like, especially on a hot, humid country. You go outside, you do that, you do some hard you do some hard work or you go to the gym, you got your electrolytes, you got your carbohydrates, you got all that, yeah. you kill it, and then you come and hit some lab curry or something like that. See, that just makes my mouth water because I'm, I'm in love with that type of cuisine. So, but, and because uh, I grew, grew up around good food, I'm a bit of a food snob, so if I go to a restaurant, okay. let's say with you, and I order a steak medium rare, and if it's not medium rare, I will send it back. Oh, I'm sorry. This does not meet my standards. Uh, speaking of food, let's go into your Pakistan uh, food oh, story. Oh, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, I was training with my boy Anthony yesterday, and we hit heavy, heavy back. Yeah. And he is also a bottomless pit. All my close friends tend to be either some sort of martial artist or had some sort of military background or they're generally tough guys who are just strong. They have good values. And they tend to be bottomless pit because we all enjoy eating. Well, of course, so, yeah. So I had told him that I took him. I had taken Guy to a restaurant after a back workout. Yeah. 
and the guy couldn't finish his food, and he's like, you're full of shit, because we went to a Korean, all three of us went yeah. to a Korean barbecue, and they kept on shortchanging our order after the 10th time, because we were just cleaning the house. I'm like, dude, well, I course, kid you not. Yeah. I kid you not. So we went there, and he's like, all right, I'm down. So we ordered the bone broth soup that had the, um, it's kind of like a cow food soup with bone broth. Right. We ordered that. We ordered like eight pieces of really big kebabs or like six inches each. Oh, kebab. We, I miss that. Beef, beef kebabs, spiced. Yeah. We ordered a brain curry, which was yep. beef. Yep. We, either, we ordered a uh, lamb biryani. Yeah. And we ordered two naans. And the only reason I ordered that goddamn naan is because I realized something. If I'm going to eat half the brain curry, because we're sharing, right. I need something to like, scoop it with, right? Yeah, yeah. And the Pakistani naans compared to the Indian naans are much thicker. They're denser. They're not right. as buttery, but they're just really, really thick. So he's like, I'm fucking... St-. And we went to the gym. We were starving. We ordered some fish pakoras, which was made from tilapia, super tender, and some chicken oh, yeah. samosas, right? So he ate the, and I told him, can you just send the appetizers really quickly too? Because we're starving. We came from the gym. We're like, okay. So we ate the appetizers, and he started scarfing down his kebabs and the brain curry, right? And the bone broth soup. Yeah. Halfway through, it hit him like a ton of bricks. He's like, what? He's like, I don't think I can eat anymore. I'm like, what are Uh you talking about? He's like, I am full. I have food in front of my face, but I just don't want to put it in my face. Yeah. And I'm like, and here I am, I'm still eating. And he's like, how are you eating this? I'm like, I grew up with stuff like this. You, eat, This is not something that you rush. Yeah. You take your time to eat it because you have to let your palate cleanse. So at one point, he's like, okay, if I'm going to eat the rest of this. So he had half a kebab left, half his naan, half his brain curry. And he wanted to have half the lamb biryani. And he's like, I'm not going to be able to take it home, right? Yeah. I'm like, he's like, oh. And he's like, God damn, I have to go to the bathroom. I'm like, yeah, go to the bathroom and make, <laughs> make some room. He comes Poop back. Or eat more do... methodology, yeah. There you go. He comes back, he's eating again, he's like, oh man, I just got a whiff of that kebab. I can't eat anymore. So I tell him, okay, can we pack this shit up? As he's driving, because we took his car. Yeah. I, I got some, uh, I don't know if you know what a kufi is. It's like a Indian Pakistani ice cream. It's a little I do, yeah, 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 yeah. So we're having a goofy, and as he's having the goofy, he burps. He's like, Ugh, I think I might have upchucked some of that kebab. Down you go. And he's like, how is this food so filling? And I'm like, I told you, bro. A lot of ghee, a lot of bone marrow, a lot of rich fatty meats, which is ultimately if you train hard and you eat that kind of food yeah. once or twice a month, it really will revitalize your joints. Yeah. People don't believe me when I take them there. I don't care how much of a bottomless pit you are. If you're not used to this food, yeah, this will hit you hard. Yeah, let me let me go ahead and stop you there because um, I did want to clarify something from the last episode because we got a comment. So Ed and I was discussing macros. Now, are you familiar with the current research on basically what matters, what really matters? So uh, fat, protein, and carbs. Yeah, but like like what the ratios of those happen to be. Oh, no. You please do enlighten me because I personally don't care. So your protein needs, if they're met, right, largely as long as you get minimum amount of fat, you're allowed to play with the other two, right? Because okay. it really doesn't matter when it comes to performance or recovery. All that matters is what you like to eat. So just to clarify, in the other episode, uh, I had mentioned protein and then carbs and fats my personal recommendation or my personal, not recommendation, but my personal taste preference, right? I'm a high carb guy, a high fat guy, and a moderate protein guy, right? So I like, you know, to hit my protein goal, and then I like uh, high fats because I love, I man, when you were talking about brain uh, soup and, and all this stuff, like that's right up my alley. I love the fattier cuts of meat. Uh, I'm looking to try more organ meat just because it's never really been something around my household because you know my mother grew up with her mother actually eating cow tongue and cow brains right it's an old southern thing and us um, is like liver and gizzards and all that right stuff. right right and she can't stand that stuff so it wasn't actually allowed my in my household and my wife doesn't like liver 
and onions, and she it kind of grosses her out about the other. Uh, How could you not look, like liver and onions, bud? See, I the best thing in the world. I've like, had seriously? very minimal exposure to that stuff. So if you do end up coming down here, we need to seek out a place with just the most amount of organ meat that we can find, because it would be heaven. Hey, I man, think. that is the pl so. that is the plan for the summertime. Uh, what I also wanted to say was that brain curry was made with a lot of garlic, a lot of ginger, right, and right. a lot of all that yeah. stuff. Now, I will say this. I'm a lot like you where I prefer either high carb or high fat. Yeah. To me, people will not believe me. I mean, first of all, when people add me on Facebook, they think my profile picture, uh, the one with me flexing there, they think it's a photo. That put photos. That picture's Photoshop. But I'm just like, I was fucking hungover. So like, if no, you I, that, I've I seen you in your little polo shirt going to work. How everything's hugging. No, yeah, it's real. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, for me, yeah. I have I have built muscle on as little as half a gram per pound of body weight of protein. Right, right. I always choose carbs or fat because here's the thing. I find po uh, protein is really key when you're cutting down or when you're recomping. Right. Because you're trying you're trying to like maintain preserve that muscle. Yeah. But people don't realize carbs and fat you need for muscle growth too and for energy. If you just eat high protein you're not going to have enough energy to be able to do what you need to do in the gym and even if you had the amount of taxing it, uh, the, the way you would tax your kidneys it's kind of like i mean i know this is contrary to what jamie believes because he could eat all the protein he wants to well yeah but that's what but, like that's him, just though. like yeah you know and we were even discussing that on uh, a previous hate cast is like i found out something jamie cannot deal he does not deal well with a lot of fiber right he just doesn't deal with well with it. He gets the runs, yeah. everything starts to like break, and he just it's like, oh, does that have fiber in it? Don't get it within five feet of me. If it's a green vegetable, I will throw it out. Um, you know, and that's just what works for him. Like he doesn't eat a lot of vegetables, and that's probably due to the fact that if you look up people who are keto adapted, right, they develop this relationship with um, amino acids where they, they start to produce more of what's... You know how cadavers, when they, like, decay yeah. and stuff, they have this putrefication enzyme, right? Yeah. And this putrefication enzyme can turn amino acids into fiber. And when you're keto-adapted, like, for instance, people on the carnivore diet get the shits. First, you know, a couple of weeks and stuff like that. That's usually due to that putrefication enzyme. It, or theoretically, that's my, my theory, Right. This putrefication enzyme basically turns amino acids into fiber, and your need for dietary fiber goes way down, but your need for amino acids goes up. That's why a lot of people who use the apex predator diet uh, develop a very high need for protein, or else they can't you know, use the bathroom. Or uh, people who are keto adapted, like Jamie is most of the time, like he's in, he's constantly going, see, uh, you know, uh, cyclical keto or apex predator diet or eating keto, right? Because he loves high fat food. You know, he he sits there, he smokes meats for twelve hours. Dude makes me jealous about his smoker setup at home. You know, yeah, but uh, yeah, um, but he does. The I mean, I love smoked meat, too. man. Like especially yeah. like uh, Michelle, we have amazing smoked meat and barbecue. Just in general, it's an art if you know how to do it properly. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. But he, he actually developed, you know, the apex predator diet because that's what works for him, right? But what I keep telling people is, as long as your protein needs are met, like, if you get enough protein, like amino acids-wise, to take care of the housekeeping stuff, to get, to take care of uh, a positive nitrogen balance, so like, you know, muscle building and, and muscle yeah. retention and stuff like that, you can actually go all upwards of, like, 40% fat, you know, 50%, uh, 60% carbs, like whatever you feel works well for you, right? And that's what professional athletes do. I mean, for I, you, I, for example, you like high-fat foods. Like you grew up with high-fat high, foods. and Or high carbs. High carbs, like, yeah. I love... So I switch, actually. I, I like to actually switch it up every once in a while, too, just because it's tasty, you know? Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the high carbs being me being Indian and rice is always a thing. Yeah. Like, so like, so go on. Your your so he got really full from the uh, the Pakistani food. Why do you think that is? Honestly, um, <laughs> this is a little gross. So when he said 
after he came back from the ba- bathroom, he's like, I think it might have been the bone broth soup because as I was trying to wipe my ass, it was like it was coated oil. Yeah. So I honestly think we start off with the bone broth soup, and it's so nutritionally dense. Oh yeah. It just satisfies you. You know, it's literally like they take whole hocks of um, either lamb or cow foot. They kind of like marinate it. They kind of take out the juices, and the bones get so soft and tender. Like you have the collagen mm-hmm. wrapped around it. And they put ghee around it, and it's so thick and fatty and juicy. Yeah. So it's a in the winter time, you put it in your mouth, it just like warms your soul. And then you could actually bite the bones and actually suck everything else out. So you get a lot of minerals in one shot. So you're just like, oh, okay. And again, North Indian and Pakistani food has been always been known for using very heavy ingredients, like a lot of clarified butter, a lot of fats, right? So when you eat this, you literally need to take a nap. Yeah, uh, so and the ideally, spices too. Like, yeah. if you're looking for for something that is an anti-inflammation diet, look no further. Indian turmeric, uh, ginger, and cardamom, all all those spices they just do wonders for inflammation. And Jamie's actually written about that for those who are interested. I'm trying to get him to transfer more of his old blog post to his new blog, so that you know, because what's really nice about his new blog is you can actually search for terms. And stuff like that instead of saying oh did he write that in 2013 did he write that in 2011 you know like in his old blog but um yeah you know i i think we went over a lot in this episode and it's actually coming up on an hour believe it or not so really? yeah yeah we started at uh 139 and it's 224 so i'm going to start to close this out but i would like a few things before we go a few things that you would uh, you would suggest people try from Pakistani cuisine or um, how you make those as well. So, okay. do you have any, um, any, any tips? Well, the best thing to do is just go into a Pakistani restaurant and generally, uh, if you know nothing about it, ask the waiters or the waitresses what they would suggest. Okay? Right. Generally, the dish that I get, it's the bone broth soup. It's called paya, P-A-Y-A, Okay. Right. It's a very commonly used dish in Pakistan, northern Pakistan, and if you're like finicky and you don't like rich, taste of rich food, we'll just don't try it. But generally, any type of kebabs are good to go if you don't know what you're doing. They usually come Absolutely. from the grill. Yeah. Any type of naan bread, and please say naan, not naan, because it just really annoys people. Naan. And any type of lentils. Just let them know. They'll give you the best suggestion. Don't be afraid to try exotic food because it does come in a lot of heavy, pungent spices. And the textures are really unique. So, like, take your time. And don't scarf this food down. Enjoy it. This is not like your chicken and rice where you just scarf shit down because you just need to eat and it doesn't taste like anything. Take the time to savor it. Yeah. And uh, I will say this, too, about... The, if, if you are particularly uh, Western in your taste profile, one of the things that's more easy, uh, that's the easiest to get down is going to be something like a kebab. Because if you look at the kebabs and how they're made, it's, they have this, if it's a traditional, if it's an actual traditional website, or I'm sorry, restaurant, they have those spinning kebab logs yeah. that they just carve off of and it's just so wonderful and the smell hits you. And it's, it's like heaven on earth. And usually those are more palatable to Western taste buds if you like your traditional fast food or if you like Chinese restaurants or something like that. That's going to be easier. And then you can kind of work from there different things throughout the menu, right? Uh, because I don't know, like their desserts are really interesting. Their desserts are yeah. fantastic. I, I, I will say this. Um, they're not like Western desserts where you could kind of go – overboard on this stuff right please right, don't right. go overboard on indian or pakistani desserts because you will give yourself diabetes <laughs> it's no joke one of my favorite desserts and you know which that is but it will make you sick to your stomach if you have it too often the jalebi the right, right. orange circular fried sugar with like cornmeal thing awesome on a hot day with some cold milk but god damn this will give you diabetes like you have to train and then have that <laughs> stuff after you finish training yeah. Also, now, what only, I want to tell. If only they had. That also, what in I want to tell. LA Fitness. Uh, exactly. Locations. Oh no, no. Um, Planet Fitness, and that would just be like, yeah, keep them coming. Yeah. <clears throat> what I want to tell people is this, okay? 
your diet is very individualistic to yourself. Like, if you're underweight, then, you know, just force yourself to eat. You're not going to get fat. And at the end of the day, one step at a time, if you're overweight, you could afford to miss a meal. But then when you're in shape, don't so stay so stringent on your diet. Give yourself some rules of, of, for flexibility, and you'll go a lot further. But notice, if you look at the bodybuilders of the past, in the 70s and the 80s, Everybody, Sergio ate different, Oliva ate different than Arnold because they customized their diet to how they knew their body worked. Like me, Bryce, and Jamie are not going to have the exact same diet because we're different individuals. So if you go to any trainer or a dietitian and they just give everybody the same copy and paste diet, get your money back and go somewhere else and don't be afraid to experiment. No, the more you know your body, the better results you'll get. And then if somebody else, when it comes to your turn to help somebody else out, right. you'll be able to talk from experience and not something you read off of Reddit or like you've heard from somebody. Yeah. Because people talk, tend to talk out of their ass a lot. But if you're interested in a place to go ahead and get all that information, you can go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Have to do the plug Absolutely. there. Absolutely. And if you're interested in interacting with people on a more form-like basis, we do have a secret Facebook group, which I will link in the description box below. If you're interested in seeing more of uh, Desi, he will, of course, be back on with us, right? He'll be back on with us? Absolutely. We can Anytime discuss, you guys have... we can discuss <clears throat> maybe overtraining and how to program and all that stuff. Uh, I want to discuss about Alpha Destiny and his naturally enhanced shit and all oh, that's bullshit. Oh, I, I know him and his sister personally, so I wish this podcast lasted another hour because I want to get into this. But anyways, next time. Yeah, like, next time we'll, we'll get into that. So this has been a casual Sunday, and as always, this is your host, Bryce Allen, uh, signing out because we never do sign-outs. Uh, I'm much too long-winded for that. So Absolutely. we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys. That was good. Yeah, man. Look, I want to get behind... Look, By the I way, I didn't pulled... end it yet. Oh, that's nice. Get trolled! <laughs> Conan! What is best in life? Crush your enemies, see them driven before you, and hear the lamentation of your women. That is good. That is good. Too many thoughts on my mind, I can't sleep at night, so I just keep writing I don't need no help, I don't need opinions, so don't waste my time then I just been living online, my city don't show me no love and that's fine Fuck local radio stations, I got more plays than all of these rappers combined I'm going, I'm going again, I've been going in, I'm fed up with so many things I gotta just let it all out, I'm talking about the shit they've been talking about Telling me I should do this, telling me I should do that Telling me, telling me things about rap Talking the truth and that stab in my back, they will knock me off track, no, no Too many things have been building, been hard to deal with, I just been drinking Remember my moves in the past, I'm wondering what was I thinking Lately I'm living in fear, wondering what if the end is so near All of this shit going on, the shootings are strong One shot to the head and I'm gone, I'm losing control but I can't let it go Cause I'm trying to get more and I've been in the moment I've been in the zone and I'm moving alone I don't pick up the phone when my family call, I've been doing it wrong And I don't know what's happening, trying to get what i just been imagining Getting close and i just been examining all of the fake shit the game has been packaging Papa, please Mr. Crumb, so grant me one request Grant me revenge. And if you do not listen, then the hell with you. I come from a town where most of the people are so close minded. They go into school and they work in a job, but they don't even like it. I won't be put in a box. Nobody telling me what I should rock. Nobody telling me what I should drop. Cause I do what I want and just know I don't stop. Recording till four in the morning, they snoring. I'm pouring my soul into every story I'm writing, producing. I mix it, I master, I'm building my craft and I'm not looking back. I've been going doing things I wanna do when I want to. Everybody wanna get away, but they not do. Everybody wanna copy you, but they not you. Everybody wanna be cool, but they not new. Whoa, look how I go. Gonna be a dentist, I still got the flow. Never gonna lose. Cause I'm still doing both Never go lose cause I've been on the road Come to your state and I'm killing the show Know that I'm young and I still gotta grow Know that I'm working the most No, I'm never gonna choke And I'm looking back down on the people below I've been keeping real I've been doing what I feel I've been out here trying to kill